The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. So, um, so basically, this sort of like uh, uh, my colleague Carl Lobo covered one part of this research we did. Um, we, we talk a lot about performance-based specifications, trying to introduce that into the um, uh, industry. Whenever you're dealing with performance-based specifications, we need to find a way to categorize mixtures based on the resistance to different exposure environments. Uh, concrete could be exposed to chlorides or freeze thaw or sulfates. Right? So you need to have good tests and criteria to choose mixtures that are resistant to different types of environments. So our research looked at all these types of um, exposure criteria, chlorides, free thaw, and what I'm going to talk about in this lecture is specifically on the physical salt attack part. Okay, Carl uncovered the chemical sulfate attack. So. So uh, many of you may be familiar with the uh, mechanism of that. Uh, so basically you have a salts uh, solution, mainly coming from um, sulfates from the uh, groundwater or other salts. Uh, when you come to the top, you have the uh, water evaporating. So you have the salt crystals uh, crystallizing and because of the variable temperature and humidity, you can have uh, cracking, which <coughs> looks more like a scaling type of uh, failure. If you look at uh, our codes and standards, really there's no ASTM uh, standards for this particular failure mechanism, the physical salt attack, right? Uh, if you look at the ACR 201 document, uh, right now we just say a water cement ratio less than 0.50 for physical salt attack. I think that's still not uh, valid, right? I mean, that's not still finalized. It's still, it's close to being finalized. Okay, so the material characteristic that we looked at was we looked, we had a type one cement, uh, we had a type two cement, you can look at the C3A contents here, 12%, 8%, and we had two different type five cements, the three and 5%. We had a slag cement, about 12% about uh, alumina, and then a class of fly ash with a very low lime content, 0.7%. So the slag and uh, fly ash are well known for the resistance to chemical sulfate attack. Uh, we looked at all these, uh, these are the parameters. We had a one inch coarse aggregate size. Uh, again, we did all our work in concrete, not mortar, uh, and SC33 natural sand. Water cement ratio went from 0.4 to 6. We saw the cements already. We varied the F ash from 15 to 30 uh, percent. Slack cement between 25 and 50 percent. non entering mixtures, we also used an ASTM type A uh, admixture at three ounces per hundred weight, and we varied the type F to get our slump between four and seven inches. We uh, did a lot of all the fresh property testing. We did strength testing um, and Coulomb testing, rapid chloride permeability, sorptivity, absorption, and the physical salt attack test. We sort of followed um, uh, sort of a, what the, the NIST were doing. We, we basically we took three by three by 11 and a quarter inch prisms, so the typical shrinkage prisms, right? Um, we moist cured them for 28 days and then 28 days air cured. And then we partially immersed them to a depth of five inches, right, in 10% sodium sulfate solution, okay? So the top part was exposed and the bottom part was immersed. Uh, the lab environment was about 73 degrees and 60% uh, humidity. We let that do, we had that testing go on for about 12 months, really there was very little failure happening. Okay, so we wanted to do something quicker, we wanted to get some quick data. So we, uh, we started doing the cycling part, right? So we did this uh, uh, 12 months, we started weekly cycling in the hot room, 100%, 100 degree Fahrenheit and 30% humidity. So we went with, uh, tried to make that phase change happen and we measured the temperature and humidity right about one inch above the surface. So when we did that uh, vari uh, variation of temperature and humidity as many of the other uh, presenters have shown before, you could have this phase change going between mirabilite and thernadite, right? So you could uh, have more rapid degradation happening. And you will see that actually in the test results that that is indeed the case. 
So this again, uh, I want to show you a schematic. Uh, all these prisms are sitting standing upright. Uh, as you can see here, 11 and a quarter inch uh, is about five inches of sodium sulfate. And you can see the marking here. We want to see how the uh, uh, deterioration is progressing. Uh, as you can imagine, the scaling starts right at the solution interface, right at where the immersion starts. And what we did um, also was that we knew that this test was going to go on for a long time. And uh, we do not want the, the, the sulfate solution to evaporate. So we um, put some oil, mineral oil, on the, uh, the top to reduce evaporation. We just followed what NIST was doing, something very similar uh, in their study. We followed that. And in order to avoid the mineral oil to contact the concrete prisms, we let the prisms sit in um, uh, like filled tubes. Basically, they were like plastic tubes, so that way they were not in contact, direct contact with the mineral oil. So we measure the scaling distance. As you said, uh, the scaling progresses right from the solution interface upwards, right? And then we did a scaling visual rating, sort of an average rating like the scaling, you know, free store scaling rating. And then we also did a mass loss study. The mass loss study had some problems, I'll tell you later. Uh, what was happening was that when we were, as you can imagine, when you have start scaling from the solution surface, that's because of the salt attack, we, because we have been doing this, you know, immersing it for, for a year or two, we start seeing chemical salt attack, sulfate attack also from the bottom. So that mass loss is also because of that. So that sort of mixes up the failure. It's very hard to get a good data from that part. So this is a, a average scaling distance, as you can see. Um, uh, till for the first 12 months or so, you see very little failure, right? Uh, and uh, as you can imagine, the 0.4 water cement ratio. This is a 0.4 water cement ratio, uh, class of fly ash at 15 percent, and then uh, 0.6. So the point, the two 0.4 mixes, the slack 25 and 15 percent fly ash, they perform pretty good. The 0.6 fly ash uh, mixes, you know, obviously had much quicker scaling. And if you look at the pictures, it's more um, obvious. These are the 2.4 mixtures. As you can imagine, this part was immersed, the bottom part. So there is a very fine scaling, as you can see, uh, progressing from here. This concrete looks very clear up at the top. Same thing here. It looks pretty good here, and then starting to scale from the bottom, from the right at the immersed face. Uh, obviously, the 0.6 is a big, big contrast. Obviously, there's a lot of you know, severe scaling at the top. And the other interesting part is the bottom part, which is immersed. You can see that uh, the 0 0.6, slack 25, and uh, the flash 15 pretty much has disappeared because of that uh, chemical sulfate attack going on, right? This is immersed in 10% sodium sulfate solution, a very, very severe environment. I think Doug was talking about 2% uh, sodium sulfate in actual uh, uh, condition. Uh, if you look at the 0 0.5 straight Portland cement, uh, type 1, and 0 0.5 uh, type 2 cement, Again, the uh, difference is, quite, uh, is a big difference in contrast. This is the immersed part. As you can see the type two is outperforming. The type one, there's nothing at the bottom, right? It's disappeared. Uh, the type two is outperforming. But the top, really, there's no difference between type one and type two. Uh, both of them are scaled very, very poorly, right? a very severe scaling. So that's why the, the failure is quite different compared to chemical sulfate attack, right? The physical sulfate attack. It's like a scaling type of a failure. And as you can see, the, the scaling distance is very similar. Almost the type 1 and type 2 are pretty much identical. So really, we're not getting the benefit of a different cement type when you go to physical salt attack, right? So that's sort of a, we, we understood that phenomena, right? It's more, it's more of a physical failure, not like really a chemical type of a failure. Uh, we did more work uh, with, uh, this is the type 2 cements, uh, the slag 35, 35% uh, slag, and then 20% fly ash with type 2 cements. Once again, we see some of the 0 0.40 mixtures did perform a little bit better than the 0 0.60 mixtures. And this is the difference is a little bit more here. In this case, we were looking at uh, the fly 30% ash mixtures with type 5 cement, 50% slag mixtures with type 5 cement. And once again, the 0.4 mixtures performing better uh, than the 0.6 mixtures. The one mixture that we looked a little odd is the 0.4 slag 50 mixture here. In this case, the type 5 cement, it seemed to have a little bit more rapid scaling distance here. Okay. The, the two mixes, the 0.45 PC mixtures, straight uh, Portland mixtures, uh, V1 and V2 that you see here, these two mixtures, they also perform pretty good. If you look at the images, uh, the 0.4 mixture is obviously doing better here compared to the severely scaled 0.6 mixtures. And this is what I was mentioning, the 0.4 slag 50 mixture uh, did scale all the way to the top, almost anyway, this very small part, it looks okay. Uh, obviously, but the 0.6 slag 50 scale a lot more worse, obviously you can see that. So really, scaling distance may not be a very good indicator in this case, right? But still, it's, this is 
obviously seem to be performing better than the 0.60 mixtures, as you can imagine. Uh, the straight bottle mixtures at 0.45 uh, did okay, did, did pretty good actually. Uh, you see very little scaling, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the top. So this is something we were interested to look at, the effect of SEMs on the physical salt attack. We looked at the, the cement type really doesn't matter a whole lot, right? Type 1 versus type 2 uh, or versus type 5. Uh, we want to look at SEMs, whether, how they, the good they were. So I'm trying to compare just the, say, in this top graph, the average scaling distance at about um, 12 months, right? Uh, actually, it's 18 months, about 18 months, the scaling distance. The 0.5 mixture straight Portland were about four inches uh, of scaling from the solution interface, right? The 2.40 mixtures actually did perform better than the 0.50 mixtures, the Fly Ash 15 and the Slack 25. Uh, the 0.6 fly ash mixtures perform about, about the same. So uh, this, this seems to indicate that the, the fly ash seems to be about the same or better. The bottom half here I have compared with all the type uh, 5 cements, right? So here the 0.45 straight photon is right here. There are two 0.4s which are pretty comparable, but there are two others 0.4 which are probably a little bit worse, particularly this one here. Uh, so overall what we found is that the SEMs, you know, this really do very good when it comes to chemical sulfate attack. When it comes to physical salt attack, our uh, data shows that it may not be as effective, probably as good uh, as straight portland, but not you know, substantially different, definitely not. That's what we found. Okay, uh, there's some work done by microchem uh, uh, Bob O'Neill, so really you have any questions you have to ask him. He wants to try to study whether it is all uh, physical salt, salt attack or chemical sulfate attack. So we did look at uh, uh, cracks uh, in the exposed area and he didn't find any filling of gypsum, whereas on the, uh, in the immersed part he did find a lot of etringite and gypsum, uh, as you can see here. Uh, uh, so clearly there's a difference. Uh, his conclusion was that uh, uh, basically less secondary gypsum in the exposed area and the scaling really started with the PSA. Okay? And some of the agate particles exposed area also cracked and degraded again, symptom of PSA. So we tried to categorize the mixtures based on the scaling distance. Anything under three inches we said was uh, um, there is very little scaling, right? Uh, resistance to PSA is good. So we sort of categorize the mixtures, uh, low resistance and high resistance uh, to PSA. And then uh, we try to compare, you know, the, we put the uh, scaling distance on this side. Uh, so low number is good, low scaling, right? And then we put on the x-axis, we put the coulombs, uh, the, uh, all everything we have measured, the subtivity, initial subtivity, secondary subtivity, absorption, uh, strength and water cement ratio. But if you look at all this data, uh, obviously we want to have a low scaling and ideally a low coulomb. But really, there's a lot. Of, the, the, the plots don't really look line up very good, uh, and uh, uh, ultimately, we are actually left with uh, water cement ratio and strength, which are pretty decent indicators. So if we have 0.45 water cement ratio, as you can see, uh, you are getting uh, fairly low scaling, and there is one that really stood out here, but pretty much in general, pretty good. Okay. So we came up, again, this was a scaling rating. This is a visual rating. That was a scaling distance. Uh, the uh, conclusions are very similar. So we came up with the suggested criteria for PSA was that if you want a high resistance to PSA, the suggestion is to have a 0.45 water cement ratio um, or, or less and a 4500 PSI compressive strength or more. Again, this for air and train concrete. So for non-air and train, it will be like 20% more. For these numbers, it will be 20% more. So uh, that was what we found out in terms of um, uh, how to categorize mixtures based on PSA. We wanted to see if we can, whether we can do something or come up with a rapid test for PSA specifically. The test we just did was about 18 months to almost two years old, so that was not really rapid. We want to do something very rapid. So what we did is instead of saying weekly cycling, right, we started to do daily cycling. So in this daily cycling, for the 16 hours we were at, uh, you know, the lab environment, 73 degree Fahrenheit and 80% relative humidity, and eight hours for about a hot room, 100 degree Fahrenheit and 30% humidity. We were testing four by eight inch cylinders, okay? And these cylinders were in a partial immersion of three inches of 10% sodium sulfate solution, okay? And we measured all these things, accumulated scale mass, scaling distance, and visual rating every 10 cycles. And in this, they, in this case, actually, you'll see that the scale mass actually gives you some meaningful results. The reason, again, is because we're doing it only for 50 cycles, right? So only 50 days. So not like two years, like the other test. And when you did for two years, then you have chemical sulfate attack, all that going, which is contaminating all our data. But in this case, in 50 day results, we know to have any chemical sulfate attack. No, there's no specimen mass loss at the bottom. 
So everything is happening is uh, PSA. So the data looks pretty good, accumulated scale mass here. Uh, you know, pretty much all the high water cement ratio mixes are all, well, you can see this every 10 cycles, we are taking the uh, scale mass. Uh, at the top, we are all accumulating here, very high scaling. Uh, they, uh, the point, then the 0.5 water cement ratio mixes, and then you see the 0.4 water cement ratio mixes. Uh, you're looking at different uh, dosages, as you can see, for uh, there's one 0.5 water cement ratio mix which did come up uh, a little bit on the high side. This is a 0.5 fly ash 20. Interestingly, the, uh, the slag 50 mixture, which had shown really high in the previous test, didn't, didn't show up here. It actually had a low accumulated scaling mass. And this is the actual data here. This is, you can see, this is a prism here. You can see again, this is for the direction. This is, these three inches were immersed, right? And then you have the scale lines. Clearly, the 0.6 fly ash 20 is more scaled than the 0.4 fly ash 20. Same thing with the slag 35 is more scaled than this one. So this is a busy plot. So I try to plot all, all of it in just one plot here. Uh, this is a cumulative scale mass at 50 cycles, right? So um, uh, these, these are all type two cement mixtures. These are all type five cement mixtures. What I wanted to show is that again, this is the, this is the, the uh, uh, type two with 20% ash. This is type two with 35% uh, slag. Again, this is uh, type two with 30% uh, fly ash and type five with 50% slag, right? If you look consistently, the type five mixtures uh, are, um, about the same or actually a little bit worse. So really it's not the type five mixtures are not performing better than the type two cement mixtures, right? So the cement type effort is not really there. The other thing, of course, you can see that is the, as the water cement ratio is going up in each SCM case, the uh, accumulate scale mass is going up, which sort of makes sense. Uh, and then the straight Portland mixtures, I drew a line here, that the 0.45 straight Portland. This is the actual uh, accumulate scale mass. They have two different straight Portland as you can, as you know. Uh, generally, the 0.4 SCM mixtures all had lower numbers, very low accumulated scale mass. The 0.5 was sort of comparison. So sort of, again, it's, uh, it, it, it gives you the similar findings we found in the long-term test that the SCM mixtures were performing more or less about similar straight into compared to the Portland cement mixtures. They were not really performing way better, okay? Uh, I know that there, there were some reports showing that the SCM actually performed worse uh, in the literature, uh, maybe the way our, all of our specimens uh, have at least 56 days. Perhaps that is one condition, that's one reason why we are finding better performance. So we, again, we did the same thing. We plotted the uh, water cement ratio and accumulated scale mass. Again, we see uh, that uh, if you keep it at about 0.45, we get good uh, PSA resistance, uh, physical solid attack resistance. Same thing for strength, uh, anything over uh, this strength, we get good numbers. If we convert this strength to an air and train equivalent, and uh, take, consider the uh, over design factor that's normally given from uh, going from this to the field, you end up to about 4,500 PSI again at 0.45 water cement ratio. So uh, to conclude, uh, mixtures uh, with high resistance to PS PSA, uh, we suggest would be like something like a 0.45 or something over 4,500. Uh, so if we didn't find any much of an effect uh, on PSA of cement types and SEMs, and uh, the, uh, we, 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 we think the, the accelerated PSA test procedure, which is about only really 50 days old, does show promise. They do categorize mixtures uh, very nicely. Uh, of course, you need to do a little bit more work uh, in terms of um, uh, finalizing uh, before you can actually standardize something like this. Uh, they do uh, show consistent, consistent uh, results reproduct uh, the two-year test. So we are quite happy to see that. And I think that's, uh, that's all I had. Thank you. Six days before the 4x8s were tested? Yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, the 4x8s were much longer too. This was, you know, the first part was 56 days, the 28 days uh, moisture, the 28 days drying. Uh, we did all that whole procedure, and then we said, you know, this is good, but it'll be nice to have a test for PSA. So we looked at the curing room. We had, we had some cylinders sitting there. This, so these were cylinders were like way old, these were like almost two years old. So we test, took those cylinders and tested. So the accelerated test, the, the fly ash mixtures are actually two, everything was about two years old. Yeah, the original one was, they were all about 56 days old when we put that in the, 
in the chamber. So it will be interesting to see what happens with the accelerated PSE test if we just did it at 56 days moisture curing. Uh, 